Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fleming, and I am here with part two of the problem that we defined in the previous video. So in the previous video, we said that we had a system with one kilogram of water in it, and it was sealed at 298 degrees Kelvin and one bar of pressure. And then it was heated so that the pressure went to two bars of pressure. And we are tasked with finding the pressure, the temperature required to heat it to that pressure. And with we also have to find the total volume of the system so that when it equals two bars of pressure, we have 0 0.3 moles of water in the vapor phase. So to do this, we're going to use three different modules from our uh, class website, and those modules are going to allow us to better solve this problem and organize our problems. So the first model or module will be the range function, and this range function is going to allow us to basically define equations and then have an unknown variable and then tell the computer that this unknown variable has to be between this value and another value. The computer will then go ahead and vary that variable until it equals a value that satisfies all of the previously defined equations. We will also use a module called the VSC module, which will just allow us to use dot map structures within our models and then uh, store those values in data frames later on so that we can access the all the different calculations that we found throughout the solving of our problem. And finally, we'll call in a database of all the chemical properties of the compounds that we have in this problem. The compounds in specific are the three most common compounds of air, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, and the compound water, of course. So to start off with, we are going to go ahead and call upon our class website. And to do this, we need to go ahead and copy the web address. And we're also going to go ahead and install dot map. So say pip install dot map. And now we're also going to tell the computer basically what the path is to the modules we want to access. So And so now we can go ahead and look at the actual modules. So now we can go ahead and look at the actual modules that we're going to call upon. So first of all, we have this uh, tools.chee. Uh, tools, uh, and this is going to be just this, the script of all of our chemical properties. So you can see there's molecular weight, critical temperatures, all sorts of things. The most important ones that we're going to use are the density and the vapor pressure um, chemical properties. Then we are going to go ahead and call upon two functions within this tree ray transform script. The first one being VSC, which I talked about a little bit earlier. We're going to be able to store our variables and our values with those variables in data frames and also use dot maps within our solving of models. We'll also use the range function, which will allow us to vary a specific variable within a range so that it satisfies equations. So we are going to import a couple different things. We're going to import from dot map, we will import dot map. We're also going to import JAX for numerical calculations, and we'll import JAX numpy, although it may not be necessary. And then we'll go ahead and import, well, we will configure JAX. So 
so that we can just increase the precision that we make our calculations with. So basically what I'm going to do is tell the computer to store all values and calculations on 64 bits rather than 32 bits and it'll just increase the actual um, accuracy of the numerical calculations. It's not entirely necessary for simpler problems, but as you get to more complex problems, it's very useful. We're also now going to import the functions from our class website. So from tools dot tree array transform import VSC range and we'll import tools dot CHE as CHE. Ooh. And we'll also just go ahead and set the gas constant as 8.314. That's in joules per mole Kelvin, of course. And now we're going to go ahead. Is that everything? I think that's everything. We're going to go ahead and call upon the actual chemical compound uh, properties of water, argon oxygen and nitrogen. So to CHE dot props argon nitrogen oxygen and water. So now that we have all of our information imported to the script, now we need to use, we need to actually define our first model. So we're going to use two different types of variables in this script. We're going to use C variables and R variables. So C variables are going to be variables stored in our dot map, and it is going to be essentially made up of variables that are inputs and outputs generally. And our R variables are going to be variables specifically used in intermediate calculations. By classifying these variables in this way, we're able to more easily call back the variables and calculations made throughout the problem. So in case we made a mistake somewhere, we can go back and figure out what we did wrong and more easily diagnose what we did. So first of all, we know that the pressure of the water can be looked at as just a pressure or a function of temperature and so we'll go ahead and use that vapor pressure uh, function from our Python script from our Python library of all of our chemical compound properties so we can say p dot p vap c dot t which will be a temperature that we define later and we want it of water so we'll index it at three and now we also know that the pressure of the system is equal to the pressure of the air plus the pressure of the water. Now we have pressure of the water easily defined. What's the pressure of air? We defined it in the previous video as the number of moles of air times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume of the air or the volume of the vapor. So we can do that here now. We'll just say number of moles of air times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the uh, volume of the vapor. Plus r dot pw, which is the pressure of the water. And we just want to simply return our intermediately calculated pressure and the final pressure that we will set in our dot map structure. So that's our model for number one. And all it's going to do is find the temperature required to get our pressure from one bar to two bar. And we're going to assume the volume for this one, the volume of the system. But in the second model, we won't assume the volume of the system. And it'll be the second module is where we're actually going to really solve for everything we need in this problem. So we're going to go ahead and create our dot map here. 
and we have the initial temperature as being 298 and that's in Kelvin we have the initial pressure as being 1 e to the 5 pascals we have the final pressure as being 2 e to the 5 pascals we have the mass of the water as being 1 kilogram and now we're going to assume that the volume of the system is just 10 liters so we can go ahead and say volume of the total volume of the system is equal to 0 0.001 and that's 10 liters so that's our dot map for this first problem for this first model and now we have a couple undefined variables we haven't defined the volume of the vapor and we haven't defined the number of moles of air so to do that we're going to do three different equations so first of all we can say that the volume of the vapor is equal to the total volume minus the volume of the water now what's the volume of the water well we're given the mass and we can call upon the density from our chemical properties library and the volume is simply equal to the mass over the density so we can say that the volume of the water is equal to the volume or I'm sorry the mass of the water divided by the density as a liquid at specific temperature Of water now notice here I've used the initial temperature and the reason for that is we know that just as the system is sealed off from the atmosphere we are given the initial temperature we also know that at this moment that there is virtually no water in the vapor phase so to find all of the water uh, all of the, vo the volume of all of the water we need to specifically only use the water and the liquid phase and to access or to call for just the volume of the water in the liquid phase we need to use the initial temperature and it's also important to mention that later on here in a second we're going to vary the temperature of the system and so we want to we don't want to be varying the density of water here in this specific line of code so it's important to make sure that we are using the initial temperature and not necessarily just the temperature in general like we've used up here and up here we're going to do the same thing down here actually we're going to do in order to find the number of moles of air we can say that it's equal to the initial pressure times the volume of the vapor divided by the uh, gas constant times the volume or the temperature initially so Again, we have to use the initial temperature because if we use the temperature later on as the temperature is being increased, it, the number of moles of vapor, the moles of vapor are only going to be made up of moles of air. It's also going to be made up of water vapor moles. And so in order to access only moles of air, we need to specifically call for the pressure and the temperature from the very initial point, the initial values were given. So number of moles of air is equal to the initial pressure times the volume of the vapor divided by the gas constant times the initial temperature. So now we've defined everything we need we've set up our equations now the last thing to do is to deal with our one undefined equate or one undefined variable and that's the temperature and so this is where we're going to go ahead and vary the temperature so we're going to say the temperature is equal to a range and in this range we can give it a guess and then a low and a high and the low and the high are simply the limits to how low and how high this temperature can get and then as we go ahead and tell this computer to solve for this um, to solve this model and to solve these equations it's going to vary the temperature until it satisfies all of the equations we've defined and so 
we're going to give it a guess of 350 Kelvin. It can't be any lower than 300 Kelvin because it already starts out at 298 Kelvin. It's got to be higher than 300, and there's just no way it's higher than 600 Kelvin. So the limits to the temperature is 300 and 600, and then the guess is 350 degrees Kelvin. Okay, so now we have, now we can just go ahead and solve this equation, or solve for temperature. So we can say VSC is equal to VSC C model 1, the name of our model, and we can say VSC dot solve. So it's going to vary values until it's finally, once it's finished, See, now it's finished. So now it has solved for the temperature that we need to satisfy this equation. So, or to satisfy all the equations. So, if we want to show the values of all of the variables that are adjustable, the variables that were adjusted throughout the numerical calculations, we can say vsc.vdf and it will store all of those variables in a data frame. Of course, the only variable that we varied was the temperature. So we found that the temperature required to heat the system, assuming 10 liters of total volume of the system, from one bar to two bars of pressure is 365.72 degrees Kelvin. If we also want to see the intermediate calculations, we can say VSC to RDF. And so, as we can see up here, we defined two different intermediate calculations as or variables as r.pw and r.p, r.pw being the pressure of the water and r.p being the pressure of the system. As you can see, the pressure of the system is about 2 e to the 5, or 2 bars, and the pressure of the water is about 72,000 pascals. And we can also see the variables that we did not change here, basically our inputs. And as you can see, they're equal to what we input up here and what we solved for with the volume of the water and everything. So you can see the volume of the water was about 10 or 1 liter. So now we want to define our second model. And this is where we're going to find our, this is where we're going to find the temperature and the volume required so that 0 0.3 moles of water are in the vapor phase. So this is going to have many more adjustable this is going to have two adjustable variables, which means that we will have more equations in the model rather than outside the model like previously. And we will also have two, uh, two variables that show up when we do the VSC.VDF. So we can start off with many of the same equations. The pressure of the water is equal to this function of temperature for pressure, or for the vapor pressure of water. So p dot p vap c dot t uh, water, and then pressure is equal to. Um, actually, we'll wait to do the pressure yet. So we're going to vary the total volume of the system. So that means that the the volume of the vapor equation is also going to vary. vary. So we're going to say r dot, the volume of the vapor, is equal to the volume, the total volume, minus the volume of the water. And now we also want to find the number of moles of air. And again, it's the same equation as previously. We will use the initial pressure times the volume of the vapor. Except this time, we are solving for the volume of vapor within the model. So rather than using a C dot 
rather than using a C classified variable here, we're going to use a R classified variable here so that as this function changes with the total volume, the number of moles of air will also change. So we're going to divide that by R times the temperature. Okay. And then we also want to find the number of moles of water vapor. And so this is going to be defined, the number of moles of water vapor will be defined as the pressure of the water times the volume of the vapor divided by the gas constant times the temperature that's at. So we'll go ahead and say that the number of moles of water vapor is equal to the pressure of the water. Again, we're using an R variable here because the pressure of the water is going to vary as we vary temperature. And so we want this number of water moles, water vapor moles to also vary with that. And so we use the R variable here and then times the, the volume of the vapor divided by the gas constant times the temperature. And then we will say, we'll once again put in our pressure of the system equation. Times the pressure of the air is equal to the number of moles of air times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume of the vapor plus the pressure of the water. And I believe that's everything. So now we need to set up constraints for the pressure and the number of moles of water vapor. So the constraints for the pressure is actually pretty easy to do. We can just say it has to be between the intermediate calculations here and the final calculation that we set up. So it has to be between the final, um, the final pressures that we desire and also the intermediate pressures that are calculated. So r.p. And then we also want a, a constraint for the number of water vapor moles. And so we will say that the uh, water, number of water vapor moles constraint um, yeah. equal to, and this has to be between the number of water vapor, number of water vapor moles calculated in this model and the total number of water vapor moles that we desire. And that's an input we'll go ahead and put in our dot map here in a second. We can name it here as C dot N water vapor moles desired. And we'll go ahead and just return the P constraint and the pressure constraints and the number of water vapor moles constraint. So now we can go ahead and create our second dot map. It'll be very similar to the first one. And we will say, again, we're just gonna put in all of our inputs, all of our known information. So we have the initial temperature is equal to 298, and it's in Kelvin. We know that the initial pressure is equal to one e to the five Pascals, one e to the five Pascals. The final pressure, Final pressure is equal to 2 e to the 5 pascals. And we also know that the mass of the water 
is one kilogram. And we're once again going to assume the total volume of the system, except we're still going to allow the computer to vary it. So we will put it in here as 10 liters. But we're still going to have the computer vary this here in a second. And we need to now also put in the number of water vapor moles that we desire. And we need to find, when we define the problem, we, need, we decided we needed to find the volume so that when it, the system reached 2 bar, there would be 0 0.3 moles of water in the vapor phase. So the number of moles of water vapor desired is going to be 0 0.3. That's in moles. So we once again need to define the volume of the vapor, or I'm sorry, the volume of the water. We need to define the temperature, and we're going to do so with a range once again, and we need to define the um, volume of the system, and we're going to do that with a range similar to how we do with the temperature. So first of all, we can say that V well, first we'll do the volume of the water is equal to the mass of the water divided by the density of water at a specific temperature. And that needs to be of water specifically. And we will also vary the temperature, similar to how we did earlier. Except this time we know that uh, the last time I calculated it, it was going to be 300, it was, yeah, 365 degrees Kelvin. So we're just going to guess, we're going to give it a guess of 360. It's going to be, we know it's between 300 and 400, but it should be about the same as it, what it was earlier. And now we need to set up the range for the total volume of the system. So if we look up here, the total volume was 10 liters in the first model, and we found out the number of moles of water, or the number of moles of air was 0 0.36. So we want the number of moles of air to actually, we want the number of moles of water to be about that a little bit less. So the volume of 10 liters up here, we're going to change a little bit to be, um, say we'll guess 0 0.12, so 12 liters instead of 10 liters this time. And then it has to be no lower than 0 liters, and it has to be no greater than, we'll say 20 liters. And so now we can go ahead and define VSC is equal to VSC C model 2 and VSC dot solve. And so up here, as you can see, is prompting me to define verbosity. Up here, we didn't define anything within this solve uh, part. In this line of coding, we just left the solve parentheses empty. And what it did was essentially give me all these values until it was done calculating the temperature required and when it was done varying the temperature and we don't want it to do that this time and there's also going to be a lot more uh, variations in the two values because we're having it vary two different values so in order to tell it to just give us the final value and just tell us when it's done with the problem we're going to say verbosity is equal to zero and to do as you can see here in a second. Invalid syntax. Okay, so I went back and fixed it. I actually had a missing parenthesis here. And because of that, I had an invalid syntax down here because I had never closed all of the parentheses. So 
we have our entire model defined, we have our dot structure defined, our dot map structure, and then we have all of our variables defined down here. So now we can go ahead and just tell the system to actually solve for these variables. And as you can see, we said verbosity is equal to zero, so it's not going to tell us when, or it's not going to show us all these values as it's computing these for these variables. Um, so if we want to see them, we can go ahead and just say VDF v or vsc vdf and that's going to show us the adjustable variable so as you can see the total volume ended up being about almost 13 liters and the temperature was about 365 degrees kelvin once again and if we want to see the rest of the variables we can say see the static variables the ones that we didn't change are just the ones that we inputted down here so they all look right. And then if we want to look at the intermediate calculations, we see that the pressure of the water was actually about the same. The volume of the vapor was about 11, almost 12 uh, liters. The number of moles of air was 0 0.447. Number of moles of Water vapor is exactly 0 0.3, which is which is exactly what we wanted, and the pressure was just under, but basically about 2 e to the 5 pascals. So, looking at these values, we can tell that the computer very, very accurately and numerically calculated for the values that we needed. So, the problem was we needed to take a system with an open system with pressures of one bar and the contents at 298 degrees Kelvin that was filled with a kilogram of water and we needed to find the temperature required so that when it was closed we would heat the system to two bars of pressure and we needed to find the volume required so that when it was at two bars of pressure there would be 0 0.3 moles of water in the vapor phase and we did just that by having the computer numerically calculate for these variables and it calculated the variable of the temperature required to do this as 365.72 degrees Kelvin, and it decided that the total volume of the system needed to be about 12.8 liters, which is actually just a little bit higher than what we guessed. And so that's it. Thank you.